and science, specifically Darwin's theory of evolution, is a battleground for many conservative Christian parents. It's not in the Bible, and so they think it's wrong. What will you teach your children about science, about where we all came from? We'll teach them the truth, uh, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and we will uh, certainly teach them about evolution, about the, uh, the theory or hypothesis of evolution. Um, and, a hypothesis? And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's an unproven hypothesis. I think that's safe to say. Will you tell them it's wrong? Uh, you know, yes, uh, we will. Um, How can you be so sure? Well, because the Word of God is truth. 53%, that's more than half of all Americans, believe in creationism, that God created the earth and everything on it, as it says in the book of Genesis. One third of Americans feel so strongly about it, they want to banish evolution from the classroom and replace it with creationism. I spoke with religious historian Karen Armstrong about why feelings on evolution run so strongly in America. What do you think accounts for more than half of America believing in creationism? Once you say that the first chapter of Genesis is not literally, historically and scientifically true, then the whole Bible uh, becomes um, a nonsense. So Darwinism became, it was, it was no longer just a scientific hypothesis. It became a symbol of everything that was wrong with the modern world. God's warriors have fought the teaching of evolution in the schools and in the courts many times over the years. The most notable recent case was in Dover, Pennsylvania. The fight was over the theory of intelligent design, which maintains the universe is so complex there has to be a master architect. The Dover School Board said it could be taught, but opponents charged it was just creationism in disguise. Intelligent design and religiously motivated attacks on evolution have no place in our public school science classrooms. And in December 2005, a judge agreed. Eugenie Scott directs the National Center for Science Education. What the Dover decision did was discourage other school districts from passing policies like Dover, where uh, teachers would be required to bring intelligent design into the curriculum. But Scott, who monitors the creationist movement, says the Dover decision still hasn't stopped the controversy from reaching into the classroom. There are some uh, teachers, I'm told, uh, who um, just routinely skip evolution. Uh, but it's the perception that evolution is very controversial that makes a lot of teachers just not want to teach it. At the Navarre's house, All right, Eden. the lessons continue. Okay. And what time is it now? An education grounded in God, a protective shield against what they believe to be a hostile secular world that can harm their children. You know, honestly, we like to be able to control what they're exposed to. Um, I don't know that it's healthy for a child uh, who hasn't developed a framework of understanding to be exposed to a whole myriad of ideas. What do you think he wants for you, God? I think he wants me to be homeschooled. Whatever God calls him to do, I want him to do it with integrity and with honor and do it, do his job well. So at the end of the day, he can stand before the Lord and say, you know, I use my time and my talent and my treasure and I use it all for your glory today. And what do you think he wants for your life? To be a preacher like Daddy. From the Navars of Virginia and their battle against the secular world to San Francisco, for a radically different call to action. Whoever speaks up most gets to shape the culture. Francisco, AT&T Park. 
This is Battle Cry. And these 22,000 screaming teenagers and adults are Christian conservatives armed with their faith and prepared for battle in perhaps the most liberal city in America. Ready to fight what to them are the evils of secular society and pop culture, sex, drugs, violence and pervasive pornography, on the airwaves, the internet and in video games. They are God's warriors for Jesus. We're here to stage a reverse rebellion. We're here to rise up, reject the pop culture, and recreate it with the creativity that God has given us. The man leading this struggle is Ron Luce. So, I have a question for you tonight. Do you have a voice? Yeah! I didn't hear you. I said, do you have a voice? I traveled to San Francisco and met Luz as he rehearsed for that night's Battle Cry event. It's like Sarajevo. I wanted to know why he's declared war on the American lifestyle. We call them terrorists, virtue terrorists, that are destroying our kids. Virtue terrorists. They're they're raping virgin teenage America on the sidewalk and everybody's walking by and acting like everything's okay and it's just not okay. I want us to read this for just a moment here. The language is extreme, but many Christian parents agree with Luce. They don't like a culture where kids know more about Paris Hilton than the Bible. But his hard line against abortion and homosexuality is what draws the controversy. Battle cry is not a harmless movement. Its program is fiercely anti-woman, anti-gay, pro-war, and pro-obedience. Critics say Luce, under the guise of saving teenagers, is imposing his conservative values on the rest of society. It represents a far bigger agenda, a Christian right theocratic agenda that goes from, from Ron Luce, the leader of Battle Cry, to Pat Robertson, all the way up to George Bush. How do you answer that? They say, this sounds like a message of, you know, bringing back your values, but it's actually a message of intolerance and of hate. You, know, you could say it's, it's divisive. Well, maybe it needs to be divisive. Luce is 46 years old, an evangelical preacher and founder of ministries that he calls Teen Mania. We're fighting for those who don't know they have a voice, that are being manipulated by our pop culture, indulging in things that really they're not even mature enough to be thinking about yet. Like many of the Christian warriors I met, Luce had a troubled past. I was one of these kids. I'm a party animal. I'm messed up. Parents were divorced. I ran away when I was 15 to go find my dad. and. Uh, I'm doing drugs and stuff, and smoking weed, and you know, my life's messed up. Jesus is love. Which is when, he says, he found God. A friend had invited him to church. God began to heal me of my, my brokenness, my past, and, and really, I think now, Teen Mania and Battle Cry is, is a reflection of what God really did inside me. His ministry is located on 472 acres in rural East Texas. It's just going to be an amazing time to come and learn about how to become better leaders and warriors of Christ. Here, he trains teenagers how to spread his message. Be able to be connected with other teenagers. We tell them their cubicle is their pulpit. This is your chance to use technology to change your generation. Just open up the floodgates. So, um... It costs each student about $650 a month to be here. They are the foot soldiers in Ron Luce's Army for God. We have 720 students. They come for one year, learning about honor and character and passion for God. 